Systems Analysis and Design Phase 2. So this is part 2 of uh, Data Process Modeling. Now here we have a what we call a data dictionary. So sometimes also called the data repository. So in a data dictionary, we actually list all the fields. So this is a way to document the data that will be used by the system. So what we're going to do here is to uh, have a list of all the data that would be used by the system and then we might as well provide the field name and then the description of the field name so this field name could be followed by uh, those who will be doing the uh, database design or maybe those who will be doing the code and then we have the description of the field <coughs> then we have the data type so it could be a number so last name that's text of course date of birth is date and then course number although it's number that's could be also a text since we're not going to use it for um, numeric computation and, and if you notice here the format is x12 then we can have the width and the number of decimal places especially for a number so the decimal place will be for a number so the width here of this data then of course decimal and then index dot so primary key that means it is the field that will be used to identify this rec a record so this is required 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 and then we also have the foreign key the course number and then this will be the format that means that student ID will be composed of nine digits while last name will be composed of 15 characters we have the date so the format will be date month and then year then we have the foreign key which is of course also 12 characters although it's called course number and before we discuss flow charting or something about flow charting we should know what is uh, what do we mean by modular design so it's, it's based on combinations of these three logical structures so these are the control structures so we have the sequence structure we have the selection structure and we have the iteration structure so when say uh, when we use the rectangle this represents a step or a process and then the diamond represents a condition or decision while the arrows indicates the logic so here we have the sequence so we, when we say sequence that means after one process the next process or the next process or the next statement so the completion of steps in sequential order one after another so that's sequence so again combining these three this one uh, let's go back we could actually uh, be able to draw the diagram for the flow chart or even it should code by combining these three structures only so we have to follow these three structures only so again a sequence structure is one after another then we have the selection structure the completion of one or more process steps based on the result of a test condition so this one will be executed based on the result of this so in other words this will only be executed if this one is true or yes so if it is false then that means we're not going to do this okay so that's an example of the selection structure then we have the iteration structure also called as repetition or looping so in a, in a repetition or looping structure the completion of a process step is repeated until a specific condition changes so this one is repeated until a specific condition changes so in this case end of file if it is no paycheck then the control goes back here it goes down and then again it will test for end of file if it's no again it will print paycheck that's why it's called repetition or looping then if it is still no print paycheck still no print paycheck still no print paycheck then yes then we go out that's why you notice we have uh, repeatedly uh, done this process or step that's why it's called repetition or looping 
So combining this uh, this tree, the sequence, the selection, and the iteration, we can actually uh, define or maybe describe the the steps or the processes or the steps of the processes for a particular task. And so, of course, we can document. You can use this one to document uh, processes. So in contrast, a data flow diagram will not show us how it is done, but it will just show us what is done by the system. So that's why it's usually used for the logical model. Then process description. So we can actually describe the process. So in again, in the data flow diagram, it will not describe the process. It will just show you what are the processes. <clears throat> but in documenting this, you can actually combine a data flow diagram with a documentation that will show how the process are uh, done. So we have the process description. So process description documents a functional primitive which represents a specific set of processing steps and business logic. Okay, so actually the a flowchart is also one of a method to describe process. So next we will be discussing uh, three more. <clears throat> we have the structured English, decision tables, and decision trees. So these are three of the ways to describe processes. Now structured English is a subset of standard English. So that means that it is quite smaller because it is just a subset of standard English and it only is used to describe process logic. Now the rules here are we use only standard sequence, selection, and iteration structure just like what we do with flowcharts. We should only follow these three structures. Then we use indentation for readability and we're going to use only limited vocabulary as I've said a while ago. It is smaller than the standard English because it is just a subset. So why is it a subset? Because again, we're going to use limited vocabulary. So here is an example. So I thought there are no uh, specific rules on the syntax of the statements that we're going to use in a structured English. But of course, one of the rules is that it should be short so here is an example for each commission earned. So that means this line here indicates that this will be part of the loop. The four here is a loop. So then we have if extra bonus equals Y. If that is yes, then this will be executed. So, but instead of executing, we have another if. So if payment total is greater than 50,000, if that is true, then these are the steps that will be performed. So we're going to add 2% to commission percent, output special letter, and output award list. So again, we do this only if payment total is greater than 50,000 and extra bonus is equal to Y. So these are the two conditions. So what if extra bonus is equal to Y, but payment is not greater than 50,000? So we have the else close here so it will do this statements here that is at one percent to commission percent and then output the award list so there there will be no special letter so what if extra bonus is not equal to yes so we have here the else so this should be written here that here's for uh indentation purposes so else if extra bonus is not equal to yes then we have this one, if payment total is greater than 50,000, we add 1% to commission percent and output special letter. Okay, so there will, no be, there will be no award list because there will be no bonus. <clears throat> and then after the loop, we calculate commission is equal to commission percent times payment total. So that is after the loop is executed. So this, this is just an example of what we call structured English. Here's another example of a structured English. So we have do and then read the next inventory record. So begin if, so if quantity in stock is less than the minimum order quantity, then generate order. And then that's it. And if, and then until end of it. So we do that repeatedly. We just read the inventory record, test if the inventory record or the quantity in stock in that particular record is less than the minimum order quantity. 
So if it is lesser than the minimum order quantity, then we should generate order. So again, that's an example of structured English. Now, aside from structured English, we also have what we call decision tables. A matrix representation of the logic of a decision. So in, here, we're going to use a, of a matrix. Specifies the possible conditions and the resulting actions. Consists of three parts. So these are the condition part. So list the condition relevant to decision. We have the action stub. So the action that result from a given set of condition and then we have the rules specify which actions are to be followed for a given set of condition so in this example we have the rules here and we have for the condition so this will be the condition and rules and then this will be the action so in other words it is something like this if the employee type is s or salaried employee or that's a monthly employee and the hours of work is lesser than 40 so what will be the action? We just pay the base salary. If the employee type is H, that, is, that means the employee is paid hourly. And then hours of work is lesser than 40. 40 is equivalent to five days of work, eight, days of, uh, eight, uh, eight hours a day. So if it is lesser than 40, we calculate the hour, hourly wage, but we also produce absence report. Because again, uh, there should be 40 days for one week. That's for eight hour a day uh, work for five days. So if it's lesser than 40, then that means there was a time that he or she is absent. So we have to produce the absence report. So what if he is a monthly employee or a salaried employee and exactly 40 hours? So we just pay the base salary. What about he is an hourly employee and exactly 40 hours we also calculate the hourly wage so what if again he's a monthly employee or salaried employee with hours work higher than 40 so there will be no overtime but we'll just pay the base salary so what if he's an hourly you know, faculty or hourly employee with a number of hours greater than 40 so we calculate the wage then we also calculate the overtime because again, it's greater than 40. So that means uh, he worked with overtime hours. Here's another example. So we have the rules and conditions here and we have the action here. So in extra bonus, actually this one is similar to, oh wait. That is the same as this one. So, but instead of writing it in this manner, we are writing it in decision table manner. So using decision decision table. So here, uh, if extra bonus is yes and payment total is higher than fifty thousand, so we add two percent to commission percent, and then output special letter and output award list. If with extra bonus and payment total is not lesser than 50,000 so it's not higher than 50,000 then we only had 1% and output award list so if you're going to compare that with the previous one it's very similar let's go back extra bonus yes payment total is higher than 50,000 yes so we have a 2% output special letter output award list extra bonus yes payment total is Greater than 50,000, no, then add 1% and output award list. So, exactly like this. And extra bonus, no, payment total higher than 50,000, we also have 1% and output special letter. Extra bonus, no, payment total less uh, greater than 50,000, no, then there will be no action. Now, every logical combination is shown initially and result can be combined and simplified. So here's an example of simplification. So credit status, yes, product, yes, yes. So we have accept order. Okay, and then yes, yes, no, accept order. 
So here, what we did here is yes, yes. So waiver for credit manager. So just leave it blank. Then still X. So, so Y. Because you notice whether it is yes or no, it will be equal to X. That's why that is for simplification. Decision trees. <clears throat> so decision trees are similar with that of a decision table. So the graphical representation of the conditions, actions, and rules found, found in the decision table. The logic structure is shown horizontal form, so horizontal form that resembles a tree with the roots at the left and the branches to the right. So the appearance of this instead of the matrix, we use a, a, a graphical representation that is that resembles a tree. That's why it's called decision trees. So here with the extra bonus and with payment total more than 50,000. So do the following, add 2% output special letter and output award list. With extra bonus, but payment total is not more than 50,000. So add 1% and output award list. Again, this is exactly the same uh, with the previous uh, decision table and the uh, previous structured English that I have shown you a while ago. So if there are no extra bonuses, then payment total is more than 50,000. We add 1% to commission percent and output special letter. No extra bonus and payment total is not more than 50,000. Then we have no action. Now logical versus physical models. Sequence of models. A physical model shown how a system requirements are implemented. Create a physical model of the current system. And then from the physical model, we develop a logical model of the current system. After the current system is understood, create a logical model of the new system. So this is the four model approach. Physical model of the current system because the current system is already existing, so it's easy for us to get the physical model. Then we create a logical model of the current system. And then we create a logical model of the new system to compare the new with the current. And then after do doing this, we can now have the physical model of the new system. This is called the four model approach. The major benefit of the four major approach is that having a better grasp of the current system functions before making any decisions so because you notice here we document we documented the current system we created two models both physical and logical models in that case we'll have a better grasp of the current system now major disadvantage is that we added time and cost needed to develop a logical and physical model of the current system so we have added these two steps one and two so adding these two will also mean add time and cost okay so that ends this video thank you very much for viewing